Please be seated. The feature will start momentarily. Four hundred fifty million years ago, the Oswego area was covered by a vast, shallow sea populated by strange and wonderful organisms, including a worm-like creature that scientists would one day name Tentaculites oswegoensis. Upon their deaths over many millennia, the shells of these creatures, large and small, built up and were compacted by their own weight into a thick layer of limestone. During the next several million years, the Earth's climate changed and frigid ice ages came and went. Towering glaciers crept down from the north, scraping soil from the limestone laid down so many years before, and as they retreated, leaving behind gravel hills, depressions that were first lakes and later extensive wetlands, and the streams that drained them. Finally, the landscape was covered by a thick layer of fine, wind-blown, organically rich soil that would one day make the Oswego area part of the richest farming area in the world. Native American people who had arrived from far to the west followed the last of the gigantic glaciers as they melted, hunting the huge Ice Age mammals such as mammoths and mastodons. As the climate gradually moderated, Native people took up permanent homes along the Fox River and its creek and wetland tributaries. During thousands of years, the Native people's cultural and social traditions changed from a society of hunter-gatherers to semi-permanent villages. The elaborate religious traditions of the woodland tradition that involved building burial mounds and other mounds in the shapes of animals gave way to the Mississippian tradition. Based on raising corn, the Mississippian people created a huge metropolis near modern East St. Louis with a population of more than 10,000 and related villages that stretched all the way up the Fox River to Oswego and beyond. By the time Oswego's first pioneer families arrived in 1833, the area's native people were living in groups of three related tribes, the Potawatomi, Ottawa, and Chippewa, were living along the Fox River and Wabansi Creek in 1833. Within a few years, the U.S. government had moved, sometimes forcibly, all the local resident native people west of the Mississippi River. The extended Pierce family was the first to settle on the site of what would, in a few years, become Oswego. Daniel and Sarah Pierce claimed land that is now Fox Bend Golf Course along U.S. Route 34 at Wabansi Creek. William Smith Wilson and his wife, Daniel Pierce's sister Rebecca, settled land that is now at the busy intersection of Illinois Route 25 and U.S. Route 34. Brothers John and Walter Pierce and their families settled west of the Fox River. Settlement surged during 1833 and 1834. And in 1835, two newly arrived pioneer businessmen, Louis B. Judson and Levi F. Arnold, laid out a new village on the bluff above the Fox River at the mouth of Wabansi Creek. They named their new town Hudson, in honor of the Hudson names from their home state of New York. But when Congress granted the new town a post office in 1837, it was named Lodi. To clear up the confusion, later that year voters made the town's permanent name Oswego, after the well-known New York City. Oswego grew quickly, and in 1845, the county seat was moved to the village from Yorkville. The town became the center of a rich farming area and was formally incorporated in 1852. The Reverend Stephen Beggs put Daniel Pierce's cabin on his circuit in 1833, making Methodism Oswego's pioneer religion. The Congregationalists, however, built Oswego's first church building in 1848, followed that same year by the German Methodists east of town on the Oswego Prairie. Back in town, the Methodist Episcopals built their church in 1850, followed by the Lutherans in 1853 and the Baptists and Presbyterians in 1855. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Oswego sent off many men and boys to war, including 13-year-old drummer boy Robinson Barr Murphy, who would receive the Medal of Honor for his heroic deeds during the Battle of Ezra Church in Georgia. After the war, the soldiers returned home to a changing community with a declining population. The county seat was moved back to Yorkville in June 1864, which contributed to the population decline, as did the Homestead Act of 1862 that lured many families across the Mississippi to try farming cheap land in the West. A destructive fire in February 1867 destroyed the east side of Main Street's downtown business district from Washington to Jackson Street. But Oswego business owners began rebuilding immediately after the fire, and the new brick and stone Union Block was completed the next year. 
Also in 1867, Oswego Township decided to replace the badly deteriorated Fox River Bridge at Oswego with a new tide arch iron bridge, the first iron bridge across the Fox at Oswego. Despite a steady, slow loss of population, the Oswego community continued to move forward. The tracks of the Ottawa, Oswego and Fox River Valley Railroad reached Oswego in 1870. The railroad and the telegraph lines accompanying it connected Oswego with the rest of the United States. With the arrival of the railroad and the construction of the first grain elevator, Oswego became a major center for the shipment of farmers' grain and livestock. When an old brewery was converted into a creamery, the village also became a center for dairy production. Just north of Oswego, where the river had been dammed to create water power for a gristmill and sawmill, the Esch Brothers and Rab Ice Company began harvesting ice during the winter for shipment to market by rail during the summer months. Oswego was also home to a number of manufacturing enterprises that made everything from lightning rods to cigars to windmills to patented door hanging hardware for sliding barn doors. The Richards Manufacturing Company, which started making door hardware in 1879 in a small building on the north bank of Wabonsi Creek, soon moved to Aurora, where it became the Richards Wilcox Manufacturing Company, which is still in business today. But farming remained the primary business of the Oswego land area, and most of the businesses in town supported agriculture in one way or the other. As farming technology changed, so did Oswego's mix of businesses. Blacksmith and wagon rights shops gradually gave way to automobile repair shops, dealerships, and service stations. During the United States' brief participation in World War I, dozens of young men and women volunteered or were drafted into the nation's military forces and served with the American Red Cross and other humanitarian organizations. After the war, the 1920s brought the community's first real population growth since the Civil War. The growth was spurred by Illinois' $60 million bond issue that raised funds for a statewide hard-surfaced road network. Concrete highways arrived in Oswego just in time for the Great Depression, but Oswego's location meant it became the starting point of three state highways, Illinois routes 31, 25, and 71, as well as a stop on a major east-west national highway, U.S. Route 34. Thanks to a variety of federal government programs, from the Public Works Administration and the Works Progress Administration to the Agricultural Adjustment Act and other assistance, the community was gradually pulling itself out of the Depression when World War II broke out. Unlike the First World War, U.S. participation in World War II lasted much longer and involved many times more than those who had served during World War I. Six Oswegoans, Frank Clauser, Elwin Holdeman, K. Ivan Fugate, Donald Johnson, Stuart Parkhurst, and Paul Ellsworth Zwoyer were killed in action during the war, paying the ultimate price in the fight for freedom. Some Oswego natives particularly distinguished themselves during the war, including U.S. Navy Commander Slade D. Cutter, who became one of the most decorated and most successful submarine commanders of the war, and Dwight S. Young, a self-taught nuclear physicist who worked as part of the Manhattan Project on developing the first atom bomb. After the war, the population growth that had begun two decades earlier accelerated as servicemen and women returned home to start new families. New housing developments began springing up in and out of Oswego, including the huge Boulder Hill subdivision, named after its location on the Bierman family's former Boulder Hill stock farm. Eventually, more than 9,000 people would call Boulder Hill home. Change also affected Oswego's religious community. The Congregationalists merged with the community's Methodists, plus a few Baptists and Lutherans to form the Federated Church, which later became today's Church of the Good Shepherd United Methodist. The Presbyterians built a new church on Illinois Route 25 in 1966, turning their old building over to a new Baptist congregation. The community's Catholics finally opened their first church in 1954, while Boulder Hill provided homes for new Church of the Brethren and Lutheran congregations. Helping draw new residents to the Oswego area were two sprawling manufacturing plants owned by Caterpillar Inc. and Western Electric, the manufacturing arm of AT&T. Between them, the two factories at their height employed nearly 10,000 workers. Also drawing more and more new residents to Oswego was the community's proximity to fast-growing DuPage, Will, and Kane counties. From 1990s 3,900 residents, Oswego's population rapidly expanded to an estimated 35,000 residents at the start of 2019. A major factor in Oswego's growth has been the notable individuals it has been fortunate to call its own during the past, starting with Chief Wabansi. The principal war chief of the Prairie Potawatomi tribe, Wabansi fought against America until the War of 1812 convinced him to seek peace. 
Although he strongly supported the United States and Illinois during the Black Hawk War of 1832, the chief was moved west with the rest of his people in 1836. Nathan Hughes escaped from slavery in Kentucky and made his way to Illinois where he enlisted in the 29th U.S. Colored Infantry Regiment to fight in the Civil War. He was wounded twice in combat and after the war decided to settle in Oswego to farm and raise his family. He is one of five African-American Civil War soldiers buried in the Oswego Township Cemetery. Phoebe Margaret Phillips Young's family illustrates the impact Oswego's early settlers had on the community. She came to Kendall County as a child with her family in 1840. She married Oswego blacksmith and wagon wright John Young. Their son, Lou C. Young, became one of Oswego's best-known builders. Lou's son, Dwight, was a carpenter and professional photographer who joined Enrico Fermi's nuclear program at the University of Chicago as a jack-of-all-trades. He went on to become a self-taught nuclear physicist who worked with the Manhattan Project, building the first atom bomb at Los Alamos, New Mexico. While there, he also invented one of the first breeder reactors. Dwight's son, Dick, was a decorated U.S. Marine veteran of World War II, who became a noted Fox Valley naturalist and author. Women weren't supposed to write adventure and mystery novels in the late 19th century, so Emily Murdoch wrote under the name of her first husband, Lawrence L. Lynch. She remarried Dr. Abraham Van Deventer in 1887 and continued to write mysteries until her death in 1912. In total, she published 24 novels in the U.S., England, France, Germany, and Spain. Catherine Kate Cliggett was born to immigrant Irish parents in 1852, worked as a school teacher her whole life in the Oswego schools, and served as elected member of the Oswego School District Board of Education, where she strongly advocated for a four-year high school program and advanced courses of study. As a youngster, Frank Vanderlip attended Oswego's Old Stone School. He earned enough for a year at the University of Chicago after the death of his father, joined the Chicago Tribune and became their financial editor, was appointed assistant secretary of the U.S. Treasury, and became president of the National City Bank, now Citibank in New York City. In that capacity, he participated in the Jekyll Island Conference in 1910, whose recommendations eventually led to the formation of the Federal Reserve Board. Ferdinand Smith, the grandson of Civil War veteran Nathan Hughes, became the first African-American student to graduate from high school in Kendall County with the Oswego High School class of 1903. His descendants went on to become teachers, college professors, and one is a retired federal judge. Rita Bell Garman was the valedictorian of the Oswego High School class of 1961, earned her bachelor's degree at the University of Illinois and her Juris Doctorate from the University of Iowa in 1968. An assistant state's attorney in Vermilion County, she was appointed circuit court judge in 1973. Appointed to the Illinois Supreme Court in 2001, she has since been elected to the court twice, served as Chief Justice for three years, and is currently a sitting justice.